Yeah, I'm sick. I, I need this microphone. Check. Are we here? Yes. All right, cool. So I'm a bit sick. Uh, Oslo weather is very cold. <laughs> so, uh, and just so you know, I'm actually no longer at Barista Hustle. <laughs> but I do dive into that a little bit. Uh, but yeah, this is my presentation. You're going to learn today. Uh, I'm very American, if you haven't heard already. Um, so today we're going to talk about increasing accessibility in coffee education. And I'm going to get into... Um, sort of broadening our ideas of what education and coffee actually is um, because it is more than just the the technical things that um, we typically think of uh, but a little bit more about myself like i said i did work at barista hustle i was doing marketing communications um, but i also helped develop uh, the online courses that they're doing right now um, doing a lot of the content the video work and also writing and editing those courses I have my own blog called The Chocolate Barista, which is uh, about racial inclusivity in the coffee industry as a whole. Uh, my focus has been a lot on the US market, but it's since I now live in Melbourne, Australia, uh, I've been broadening that to be more global. Um, I also write for Spredge. Um, I do a lot of writing as well for Standart. So I'm sort of like my overall scope is just coffee culture as a whole. So I guess. You can call me a coffee anthropologist. <laughs> um, but I've also done, you know, before I was a barista and did a lot of training and mentorship. So, you know, I just kind of riff about um, trying to uh, widen the, the floodgates for people to be able to come in and learn, both on the, co the consumer side and the uh, retail side of things. So, what do I mean when I say increasing uh, accessibility and why, does it, why is it important? It means making the information and resources that we all have and making it as widely available as possible. It means getting to a point where we're freely sharing the keys, so to speak, with as many people, uh, not with just our peers and our colleagues, uh, but in not only to, for them to become better coffee professionals, uh, but sharing these keys so that these ideas that we have can be challenged. I know Chris yesterday talked about how there are a lot of like articles and things online that he would see about roasting, and not everything was correct. Um, and you know, a lot of those, uh, a lot of that online information can and should be challenged. But if the information is, if people aren't learning the information necessary to challenge that, that we're gonna find ourselves uh, stagnated and the industry is just gonna eventually slow and plateau to a point. <coughs> and our industry, as young as it is, is going through a lot of large scale change, not even in just you know science and innovation, but also in personal sustainability, cl climate sustainability, economically and whatnot. And we need to work on opening up the current, <coughs> current pathways and creating new ones for people to come in and be able to help us innovate the industry. Because we need to, overall, we need to have as many people on board as possible. We cannot have the same people that we've always had answering, asking the same questions and coming up with the same answers. We need to be bringing in a lot more people so that we can figure out how to problem solve <coughs> the issues that we have. So, what do I mean by coffee education? Typically, we think about, there we go, entry-level coffee education and training. So that's technical barista skills. I would also throw roasting in there. Uh, a lot of people come into the industry through barista work, but roasting is also an entry-level job as well. And, um, you know, customer service is in there too. But some of the other aspects that we don't typically have a traditional education model for is management and HR, uh, learning how to teach other people uh, business and operations. So labor percentages, shop finances, stock, P&L, bottom line, marketing and external communications. For me, myself, I had to teach myself how to do this. <laughs> and that was just through, you know, a lot of the information that I got was actually from outside ind industries, which is really helpful, but to have this in a specific coffee focus would be extremely helpful for all of us. And then there's also personal development and soft skills. So what I mean by that is learning empathy, 
or improving communications with others, learning about time management and negotiation skills. And these are all things that, you know, as we move from barista work or roasting work and move into other types of positions like marketing or, you know, executive level positions, that you kind of pick them up as you go along. Um, but having, you know, training specific to that is going to be extremely helpful. But only some people are getting that training. <coughs> There's also mentorship. So obviously a, a lot of us in here have had people who have taken the time to, you know, take us under their wing and teach us all uh, what it is that we need to do, need to go for the positions that, you know, for our careers. Um, but not everyone is getting that mentorship. So when I think about, if I were to visualize accessibility in coffee education, um, to me it looks like a bottleneck. I actually saw this sign on my way here today and I was like, I knew this is a sign. <laughs> so it looks like a bottleneck and at the bottom of the bottleneck would be your entry level um, things. So entry level education and resources, barista training, roaster training, and as you move on up, the top of the bottleneck, where it gets a little bit tighter, would be your things like management, HR, operations, and mentorship uh, trainings. So let's look at it in a different way. This is the bottleneck, and as you go on up is your career trajectory. So like I said, entry-level education resources are at the bottom, pretty widely accessible. There are a lot of things, we can go online right now, we can go to Barista Hustle, we can go on YouTube, we can pay for courses um, that aren't that expensive to get you know, the basic level information that a lot of us know already and have had. Um, but then some of the issues that keep people from going past there, there's gatekeeping of information. So gatekeeping, what I'm seeing is that there are a lot of people who have the most access to information, have all the resources, have created it, and aren't, they just aren't sharing it, or they're being very selective with who they're sharing that information with. And with this industry, that is, that's just not, it's not gonna, it's not sustainable, it's not going to fly. The next thing I also see a lot um, are the thing, industry events, barista camps, roasters, guild events, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these two can actually be, you know, interchangeable because there are some people who are able to do, you know, they get the entry level stuff and are able to get to the industry events, but then the gatekeeping comes after there. Um, and those things are, you know, they may not be financially viable for everyone to get to, or even physically. It's like this event is in Oslo. I came all the way from Australia. I wouldn't have been able to be here unless Melanie <laughs> hooked it up, <laughs> which is, thanks. But, <laughs> uh, but another part of the top of the bottleneck is job demand. Are there even positions available? Um, for someone to get into marketing from, you know, being a barista or someone to get into roasting and then, you know, from there get into green buying or whatever it is. <coughs> and, you know, a lot of our companies may not necessarily be looking for these positions, but it wouldn't hurt for us to, especially the more corporate coffee companies, um, to start opening, you know, this field up for other people to get into. Um, even though, you know, coffee, coffee is a weird thing when you think about us compared to other industries. Because um, like, like what was just said, we learned a lot of what we know by fucking up. And we're such a young industry and we don't necessarily have, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't really know what we're doing. We're figuring it out as we go. But we can't just throw, you know, any old barista into a marketing position and expect them to do well. Uh, we need to offer them that training, whether it's from someone else and we outsource it, or, you know, we're training them ourselves to be able to do that position and to do it well. So how can we best provide the resources that they need to learn to build that new skill set and that will benefit our businesses as coffee businesses? Another way to look at bottlenecking is, this is actually bottlenecking in, uh, from genetics, uh, but I found it really interesting because once the, the bottlenecking event happens and there's the surviving population, and what I've always seen 
after the the barrier obviously uh, the people come through the barriers and the surviving population and the surviving population always looks the same we can look around this room and see who a lot of the surviving population is <laughs> and that's not me attacking you <laughs> that's just the, that's just a fact of the matter and you know the bottlenecking it disproportionately affects people who are marginalized and if you don't know what that means uh, it's people who are uh, minority groups so people of color women people in the LGBT community and we don't have to look that hard to see that this is this is an accurate thing but for some the bottlenecking the bottlenecking immediately tightens up after the entry level and it's like they're no matter what they're not going to get past that point point. and there's this tweet that I found online that really <coughs> that kind of puts this into perspective and something that I've personally dealt with um, also very recently. So this tweet, the UN woman asked, what is your best idea to make the workplace more inclusive? And someone answered, stop hiring people of color at the junior level only to keep them there forever, getting frustrated when they leave and then shrugging your shoulders because you know some person of color desperate for a job is right behind them. That's real. <laughs> For me personally, that has definitely affected my life and it's affected my career. Um, but not so much so that I haven't been able to continue. But for some people who would like to continue on and like to learn and want to, you know, continue to grow in their in their careers, they are often just kept at that base level. They're kept at the entry level, and they don't, for some reason. Uh, which we will get to talk about later in Tamika's talk. <laughs> they're, they're being kept there and not moving on. Ooh, excuse me, I need some water. And then what ends up happening is that they just give up and they leave. And that's not going to you know solve the problems of like diversity for the industry or anything like that. <laughs> and then what else I'm also seeing Overall, when it comes to the industry, especially as a marketing professional, we aren't able to reach out to the markets that we want to. We aren't making nearly as much money as we could because we have this very you know, limited scope. We have only certain people working at our companies who are only able to connect with certain people in the market. <laughs> and everyone wants to make money. So what are y'all doing? <laughs> I believe we're blocking ourselves from evolving as an industry as well that is always changing by maintaining this a path for lateral mobility that only benefits some people. And withholding valuable information for development keeps others from being able to contribute to the conversations that we're having that we need for problem solving. And there are some groups around the world that have been uh, really awesome in sort of like combating this. I went to Breeze to Connect in Melbourne earlier this year and it was a very awesome event by Sonia. And um, it wasn't just, you know, talks um, about, you know, being women in coffee, but there was a whole day of workshops where, you know, for me, I got to learn about uh, pressure profiling and, you know, messing, seeing the guts inside of an espresso machine and, you know, doing that type of technical training that had never been offered to me before. Uh, I also spoke at Barista Connect and was able to talk to them about marketing and social media and, you know, how to not only do that for your business, but marketing yourself. Um, there are some of these other groups, Caffeinated and Melanated in New York, Queer Coffee Events is in California, Same Cup is a new one out of Australia um, that will focus a little bit more on women in competition um, and also building technical skills and trying to, you know, increase this accessibility to education. And this is awesome because, you know, a lot of us are just getting fed up and being like, you know what, I'm just going to take it upon myself to do it. But what we need everyone else to kind of get on board with is offering that support and giving us money. <laughs> And so the final point is individuals and businesses with the highest amount of access to resources and information must heavily invest in supporting groups like this, affected <coughs> most by the bottleneck, and develop programs of their own to widen it for everyone. It's not just, you know, oh, there's this, um, this nonprofit group that I'm going to give my money to to do that, but we can be doing this within our own businesses. Why are we limiting ourselves for people to learn more than just the basic standard? at the entry level. 
can, uh, you know, can we examine and point out the ways that we may have been gatekeeping information? Um, or are there people, or as people who are further along in our careers, everyone here in this room, have we offered ourselves up to mentor people, especially people who aren't really like us? Upholding the bottleneck of uh, accessible education only keeps in place the standard that I think is far lower than where we should be, and we can be much further along. We're blocking ourselves from being challenged, which only ever, uh, which only ever results in, when you're challenged, it results in positive growth. And whether that be financial growth or the culture of our teams and businesses, or even personally. Increasing accessibility creates more opportunity for true diversity, which increases creative innovation and problem solving. And so it's time for us to not only just catch up, but we need to keep up, and then we need to start moving ahead. And that's all I got for y'all today, <laughs> with this voice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well done with the voice. I think you managed. Thanks. Um, you can keep that microphone, but okay. you might want to mute it. Tim will help you. Thanks. And. No. No. I don't have to talk into the microphone while I'm helping you, but I do it that anyway. Yeah, <laughs> 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 